Hi everybody and welcome to this revision video on social media. This is part of the social influence topic for stage 2 psychology. Let's get started. So there's no question that social media has changed the way young people engage and communicate with one another. The negative implication of social media is often the one that we hear the most. However, it is important to consider the opportunities that such platforms can provide. So the research into the positives of social media is still very much ongoing, but it is an area that needs a lot more research and definitely needs to be considered. So pro-social behaviour encompasses helping behaviour, altruism and cooperation. So Wright and Lee in a 2011 study found a strong positive correlation between engagement in social media with pro-social behaviours and a negative correlation between gaming and online pro-social behaviours. Interestingly, some researchers have proposed that engaging in online gaming requires the player to work collaboratively with a team to achieve a mutually beneficial outcome. This has long-term behaviour benefits, allowing individuals to transfer the collaborative skills to the workplace. Here we can see the prevalence of social media. Interestingly, this does not include TikTok, which would also be highly influential. So emerging research shows that social media platforms such as Facebook, Snapchat, blogging and Instagram, among others, have been found to strengthen young people's existing interpersonal relationships, whilst providing the opportunity for young people who live in rural and remote areas to stay socially connected. So social media in the right circumstances and the right context may not necessarily always be a bad thing. It not only prevents social isolation, but it provides an insight into the social behaviour and expectations of unfamiliar social experiences. So it could be argued that this form of vicarious learning not only enables the development of social skills, but plays a useful role in helping people to adapt and function well in novel situations. So having access to social media, such as Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc., may also be educational in knowing how to behave in certain social situations and being respectful of certain groups. Social media also provides an opportunity for individuals to explore and experiment with their individual identity and self-expression safely. Political views and cultural expression can be tested through social media with the reaction from others providing insight into the acceptability of these views. This informal yet crucial experience will often help to guide people around the socially acceptable behaviours and ideals. Let's now talk about mental health and social media. Interesting research on the use of social media showing a correlation between social media use and unhealthy peer relationships and comparisons is ongoing. So even though I've just discussed the positives or the possible benefits of social media, we also need to consider the negatives as well. A recent survey found that 97% of teenagers between the ages of 13 and 17 have at least one social media account. Interestingly, those suffering from anxiety self-reported spending approximately 89 minutes more per week than the average youth in the same age bracket. Other studies show a positive correlation between engaging with three or more social media platforms and diagnosed depression and anxiety. So in other words, studies have shown the more social media platforms someone has, the more increased likelihood of someone being diagnosed with depression and anxiety. Research by Friesen in 2017 and his colleagues found that passive use or simply monitoring others' post correlates with depression and lower well-being, whereas active use, including posting and interacting with other users, correlates with better well-being and lowered levels of, of depression and anxiety. This illustrates the dopamine reward loop. We go through this a little bit more in our next topic, the psychology of learning but it shows what is happening as the brain releases addictive hormones during social media use. So we pick up our phone, dopamine increases, we feel happy, dopamine decreases, so we pick up our phone. When we get likes and comments on our posts, the same hormones and the same parts of the brain are activated when it comes to addictive substances. Here we can see the prevalence of youth mental health. There is a direct correlation between the increase and rise of social media apps 
and also an increase in anxiety, depression, and stress. Now, of course, this will depend on the individual, but there is strong evidence for correlations here. So what are the mental health implications related to social media? It's no surprise that young people can become obsessed with how they look and present themselves on social media due to the presentation of unrealistic ideologies of beauty and success. So young people in particular are vulnerable when it comes to cultivating the so-called perfect image, leaving them susceptible to a range of mental health challenges. So for example, the perfect selfie, several filters, retouching, etc. According to Leary and colleagues of 1994, the need to create a perfect image on social media is an influential factor of why people spend billions of dollars each year on cosmetic products and procedures in order to enhance their appearance while jeopardizing their physical well-being. So things like sun exposure to get the perfect tan and excessive dieting to reach an unrealistic weight. There's also several ethical concerns with social media. Social media stakeholders have been criticised for using the individual's engagement on all platforms to predetermine which content will be released as ads, pop-up content, and generally entice ongoing interaction and influence. In late 2020, a Netflix documentary called The Social Dilemma explored and revealed the extent of social media companies disrespecting their users' privacy, consent, and most of all, free will. It is heavily manipulative. It is also very important to remember how poorly monitored social media platforms are and the reality that most young people with social media accounts are not of the age recommended for their engagement. We go through this in a lot more detail in class. But I hope you found this video useful. As always, any questions, let me know. Otherwise, happy revising.